Hi and welcome back to another demo. Um, today I'm going to be painting this old dilapidated barn on a beautiful early summer day. Um, it's a line and wash and line and wash is fast becoming my favourite type of painting. I've always loved it but I think because I've got a background in drawing um, it's something that I'm very very fond of doing. So this was my quick sketch um, taken from um, a couple of barns, photographs of barns I found on Pixabay, which I've just kind of merged into this sort of pretty generic barn and just imagined a few trees and some grass and overgrown sort of flowers and bushes around it. So the first thing to do is to do the line work. So always make sure that your fine liners um, or ink pens are waterproof before you start if you're going to paint over them. Um, I'm going to be using a 0.8 Pigma Micron um, and for the thicker shadow lines um, it's easier if I use a larger nib and so I'm going to be using a Faber-Castell Pit Pen 1.5 nib um, for the heavier lines. But these are the only two that I'm going to use for this. I'm today I'm working on um, Milford 140 pound cold pressed paper um, it's 11 inches by um, 15 inches in centimeters that's um, 28 centimeters by about 38 centimeters it's taped to my board um, with ordinary cheap decorators masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so when I come to paint um, the paint will sort of tend down, sort of downwards with gravity and that in a way will help me with getting the watercolour paint to diffuse and blend and look, look beautiful and effective on the page. So the first thing that I'm doing is going over my sketch, my pencil sketch, with the fine liners um, and I'm trying to make sure that I get the barn looking quite sketchy, um, not too exact, and try and focus on the damaged roof with a big hole in it where you can still see some of the rafters through. Um, so I'm just focusing on that but trying to get just about enough detail to suggest the fact that it's a hole um, without overdoing it. Um, the sort of line work that I do when I'm sketching like this is hit and miss lines, scratchy lines, sort of scribbly lines, I think they can look more effective than trying to be too exact and trying to draw really straight lines. This old barn has seen better days, the roof is sagging, um, planks are falling off, it's stained and really worn out. So that's the look that I'm going for here. And as I say, varying my line width, I'm hitting and missing, which means I'm skimming or skipping the pen over the paper so that it doesn't form a complete line, um, just sort of like half and half lines, um, using a very light touch as well to sort of shade with um, lines that are really close together. I mean, that's called hatching. And if I go across that at a different angle to darken it a bit with different lines, um, that's known as cross hatching. So I'm using um, those methods for my shading and I'm using the thicker pen to make sure that I've got um, a nice simple shadow um, just underneath some of the planks, under the eaves, um, in places and all that sort of thing. Because the barn is the focal point, it's the thing I'm going to be focusing the most on. When it comes to the trees and the surrounding overgrown grasses and flowers and things, I'm going to be keeping them incredibly simple. But I am trying to make sure there's enough detail in the barn, enough tonal value to um, draw the eye straight away. With a line and wash, um, obviously just about all the detail is carried by the outline that you do with the line work. And so that's what I'm focusing on. But also um, the shadows and the darkest areas are put in also with um, the black fine liners. And those are my darkest darks. 
the lightest lights will be unpainted paper so I've got to make sure that there are, is some unpainted paper when I come to paint and the paint of course will provide all the mid-tones and maybe a few darks as well So now onto the trees. To start with, I'm just going to outline the tree trunks and just put in the positions of the tree foliage and canopies with sort of little scribbly dotted lines. And the same with the, um, the hill and the land, the rising land behind the barn, um, which I will hatch and cross hatch um, just to get a little bit of um, soft tone into um, that area um, and then when I put the paint over that even if I use similar colors to the paint that I use for the for the foreground um, it'll look slightly darker because I've put in that sort of uh, very faint shading with the fine liner you can see I'm really not being too careful I'm just very roughly sort of scribble shading across that area uh, behind the barn um, keeping things nice and loose and fresh there's enough detail in the barn and once i've got the tree trunks darkened up um, and a little bit more um, dark detail in the foreground grasses and trees running in front of the barn then that should balance the composition should be balanced um, all the elements should be in harmony and hopefully all the tones should be in harmony. And once I've got all the tones in with my fine liners and all the elements, then it should just be a, a matter of just a few minutes to paint the scene. But we'll come on to that a bit later. At the moment, I'm working to make sure that there's enough sort of balance of tone. Every now and again, I'm just kind of half closing my eyes and looking at the scene and just checking that the tonal balance is right. There's enough darks, enough mid-tones or areas that I will have as mid-tones when they're painted and the areas that I'm planning on keeping unpainted for my lightest lights. And um, don't worry if it takes you a while to complete the line work in a drawing like this. Um, it does take a while because what you're doing is starting from just the very basic outline and slowly but surely building up um, the impression of the barn and the trees just through different weights of line, um, little bits of shading and heavier lines for the shadows. And now going in with the 1.5 fine liner and filling in the trees and being careful not to put too many branches into the trees at this point because once I've painted them I will paint in a few more branches just to um, continue the branches into the canopies um, that I paint so therefore I'm just putting in the thickest branches here with the ink um, keeping it nice and dark. Those of you who've um, seen me do my line and washes on this channel before will be aware that I'm very, very fond of a lot of darks. If you're not that fond of as many darks as the amount that I use, then of course, obviously you don't have to um, do that. Just leave the trees as outlines and then you can complete them um, with paint. So I'm just darkening up um, across the sort of flowers and grasses across the bottom, just darkening it up so that my dark areas kind of link and lead from the bottom left corner across at a shallow diagonal and then to the tree on the right and then across to the barn and then hopefully it will be across to the trees and the sky. This is one of the commonest types of um, composition. I think it's known as either an S or, an, or a Z composition as it kind of zigzags across um, across the page leading the eye in that sort of way. 
I'm leaving most of the foreground grass area plain uh, because I don't want the eye to rest there, but there's just enough detail going in. And now just a bit of scribble hatching um, for that um, wall there where it's obscured and in shadow from the bushes that are in front of it. And once I'm happy with that all the detail there is there that I want, apart from the few branches that I'm going to put in later, um, I'm going to leave it to dry completely. And then once it's totally dry, um, I'll take my number 14 um, Escoda Ultimo synthetic wash brush and just wet the sky in a few random places. And then with cobalt blue, um, create a really nice sort of blustery day sky where the clouds are just sort of scudding through the blue sky. So I'm looking for some soft edges, some hard edges, um, some sort of really smudgy areas where the paint is very faint and then some deeper blue um, areas as well. So I'm quickly working into the sky um, just to get these effects. You can see I'm painting through my tree canopies. That doesn't matter because I'm going to be painting those in darker. And um, so I'm not worrying about painting around the canopies. What I am concerned about is to make sure that there's enough variation of hue and tone in my sky. So I'm using my brush clean and damp to sort of move the paint around. I'm applying a little bit more darker paint and then I'm also um, cleaning the brush out, wringing out all the water and then running through that beautiful cobalt blue again to introduce some lighter areas. Now this is cobalt blue mixed with cad yellow and I'm putting in wet in wet because of course the sky area is wet my tree canopies and then I'm going to make sure that I get some of this lovely green um, across the land as well. All the details have been provided by my line work so it's just a matter of roughly putting the paint in place where I want it. I think the beautiful thing of this sort of um, loose line and wash is that the detail is provided by the line work. So when you come to paint, it's just a matter of just throwing on a few sort of random things in the right kind of colour in roughly the right place and you'll end up with beautiful effects. I've added some burnt umber and some raw sienna to my green that I made up with the cobalt blue and the cad yellow and I'm filling in areas with this earthier green, some across the foreground. I'm filling in the background bit where you can see how effective it is because it's got the cross hatching behind it. So that the field just in front of that um, stands out nice and bright green. And now using my Pro Art Hake brush um, to, um, with some dark brown uh, burnt umber um, to sort of just try and get in some nice texture marks and to build up this kind of wet in wet wash uh, that's very very loose and just giving support to the line work if you see what I mean. And now I'll add a little bit of Payne's grey and a bit more of the cobalt blue to that green to make it really dark but still only um, a fairly sort of weak mixture but darker if you see what I mean. Um, I think you'll see there, yeah. So I'm just starting to introduce into the damp paint um, some darker tones, which will softly diffuse and blend. And then this is a stiff hog bristle stippling brush. And I'm just using that with the dark color again to get some sort of um, stippled edges, just breaking up those edges of the canopies a little more. I mean, you'll hardly see that when it all dries, but it's just giving me slightly more of that sort of lost and found edge look to my canopies. Now I need to leave it to dry completely. 
and here it is it's all completely dried and so I'm mixing up some Payne's grey on my small calligraphy brush and I'm now just going to kind of link the branches into the canopies a little bit more I'm extending the ink work or line work branches higher up into the painted canopies leaving some gaps here and there and then pulling a few fine branches out through the top of the canopy I don't want to be overdoing this, but I want to do just enough to be able to integrate the tree trunks and the tree branches a little better into the painted canopies. You can use any small brush for this as long as it's got a small point um, so that you can get some nice fine lines at the end. I'm looking at my existing branches and then sort of guessing where they would go behind the canopy and then pulling them through any lighter gaps um, as finer branches. So I'm trying to keep everything looking as if it's fairly linked and harmonious. And the same over this side. I'm taking my time with this because it's these finishing touches that are the most important and that make the most difference to the overall look of the painting. Even though the trees are the supporting cast um, to the barn, they're still quite important. So I want to make sure that they look balanced and they look right and that the soft um, fine branches sort of all lead down towards the barn. And now all that's left to do is to paint the barn with my three quarter inch flat brush and some burnt umber mixed with a bit of Payne's grey to dull it down a bit. And I'm just going to paint randomly over my barn. It'll literally take me a few seconds to get this barn finished. I'm not going to fuss over it. Um, I'm just going to draw the paintbrush over the barn, hitting and missing, leaving some unpainted areas as well. And that's it. The barn is finished. It's as simple as that. If your line work is right, it's a really quick, easy job to paint. So I'm going to remove the tape and have a look at it, see how it looks with a nice clean white border, pulling the tape away from the painting, um, making sure that if it was to tear, then it won't tear into the painting. And I'm quite happy with that. I'm happy with the looseness, the freshness, um, and I think I've achieved what I wanted to do, which was to get the sky and the landscape looking really fresh, like a sort of a, a, a late spring, early summer, uh, windy, sunny day, um, and get, getting that to contrast with the old ramshackle, run-down, dilapidated barn, and the scribbly, scratchy textures and the strong tonal values, I think, really, really help to make the painting of this sort of scene much, much easier. So I hope you'll give this sort of thing a go. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more like this. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And if you're interested in purchasing any of my paintings, uh, please follow the link in the description below to my Etsy shop, Owls and Flowers Art. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.